Welcome back to Amesbury, Massachusetts for the second round of the four week ladder series, which is the fifth ladder in the regular season to determine the last entry of the Classic Candle Pins Tournament of Champions. He's Frank Face, I'm Kyle Bruce, and we're gonna break it down for you. Uh, we're gonna see the fourth appearance already of the, the young history of on Classic Candle Pins of Brian Fuller Jr. He defeated Dan Gothier last week, 360 to 340. And uh, Frank will profile our number four seed from Newburyport, Massachusetts, Brian Fuller Jr. Well, Kyle, you mentioned his number of appearances. That just goes to show you how comfortable Brian is bowling uh, on, on a, such a high competitive level, especially in this house uh, on TV. It really doesn't seem to phase him. Uh, Brian Fuller from Newburyport, Massachusetts, has a, holds a high single of uh, 224, high triple of 474, league average of 127. Um, you know, comes from a rich history of candle pin bowling, and and can't really say much. Of, can't really say enough about him. Well, we'll certainly try. We, we can hope so. Yeah, he, we'll he has the stats to back up those credentials. Yes. I'll tell you that much. And uh, we're going to see him face the number three seed, who uh, threw a 580 in the roll off, the Harry Potter lookalike from Derry, New Hampshire, Chris Winniars. Kyle, when, when Chris is not playing Quidditch, uh, he, he's, he's usually in a bowling center. He has a high single of 188, high triple of 449, and a, high, uh, a league average of 118. And yeah, Kyle, he's a, a good young bowler. He's very confident. Uh, no stranger to TV. He's bowled on TV a couple times on the, uh, the, the kids show, Canopin for Kids. Also an ICBA youth champion. So I suspect a very good match here, Kyle. Should be a great match. The winner of this second round matchup will face Keith Beaupre in our semifinal match next week. Brian Fuller Jr. taking on Chris Winniars, and we hope you enjoy the match. We'll see you in the post game show. Classic Candle Pins for the second round matchup of our four week ladder series, the fifth ladder of uh, the first season of our program. Brian Fuller is back after defeating Dan Gothier last week. 360 to 340. He has a big hit. Brooklyn side and has the corners full here. Nice oh shot to God. get things started. Brian Fuller right out of the gate. The Newburyport native with a league average of 126. Here's his bonus. And... I wanted that six pin to trip out of there. Fills it with seven. Once again, um, Kyle Bruce with the legendary Frank Face. And of course, the developer of our M5 scoreboard, Scott Moore. Yes. Scott Moore. The M5 scoreboard. Yes. The Richard Daystrom of our program. And we're going to take a look at our third seed, Chris Winniars from Derry, New Hampshire. Had a, and he's the third seed by one pin. The importance of pinning. Yes. We talked about that in the last show. Brooklyn pocket hit, mm. and he starts his match with seven. Chris is the owner of a 118 league average, a high single of 188, and a 449 high triple. What nice a shot. shot to get his match started. What a shot. That's fabulous. Way to come right back and put a mark right back where uh, right up against Brian. That'll help you become the higher seed if you make a lot of shots like that. That's why he's here. That's right. That's why you guys are here. Of course. Right. And he got a break off the head pin. The 1-3. One, 1-3 three. Yes. Nice spare. Pair of marks to get his first match, the second round of our ladder here, and here's 
Brian once again, and Brian got a break. Yes. A seven pin drop. It's makeable. I'm not so sure I like the piece of wood behind the two, but we'll see. Oh, and he, he makes it. it happen anyway. Well, Chris isn't giving him anything to start with, not giving him any time to get warmed up, so Brian's going to have to floor it in a hurry. And that one got away from him. We got the groan there. Yes. Dan had it last week, and Brian has it this week. Yes. It's catchy. It's contagious. Yes. You would assume that they listen to a lot of Swedish death metal. Yes. Because of this. <laughs> That's true. Ten nice box. A lot of which is uh, bands that I can't pronounce. Of course. But I have listened to them. Uh, although I know you're a big Nightwish fan. But Nightwish I is fantastic, yeah. yes. We were driving over here this morning talking about um, covers of different songs. And my wife mentioned Husker Du. Who's going to do? Blast from the past. Absolutely. On the head pin, but a split. Got a three and one, two, four, seven and ten. But a nice start here for Chris. Possibility for six and another. Ooh, just slid by the two pin. That one got away from him. Tried the corner and missed. So an early two-pin advantage here for Winnie Arns as he crosses over to lane six here from downtown Amesbury. Big head wow. strike. There you go, right back on the head pin again. Nice ball. He's got a nice throw right in there. Nice and easy, not too much... Not too much extra. Very efficient throw. I like it. Not about the velocity, but no. it's about the accuracy. Absolutely. And speaking of accuracy, Brian Fuller Jr. has a single pin to pick up. This is the seven pin. There it is. And that was the seven pin. No shot. Guys, we have quite a start to this match. Yes. Rock Three marks rolling. apiece. A lot of paint on the board. I like it. Yes. I may have to sharpen my pencil before the next string. Yes. <laughs> and he cannot break up the split. This time. A little full on the head pin. Fuller is full. Yes. So, again has, and again. Yes. 67 half here. And Ooh. nearly cut it over. I wouldn't think it would be that much of adjustment if you're, at least if you're on your object. You know, it's just such a half an inch. Yeah, how, even do you, less how do you adjust for half an inch over 60 inch, uh, over sixty feet? I mean, yeah. you really, you just got to keep pounding away at it, and eventually you'll just start getting a little sloppy again. Here's the first bonus ball. Seen that before? Even the same four six four three four six. Ball seemed to break the last ten feet. Yes, yes, that is the signature Winnie R's ball. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You got it. What a great shot! Unbelievable. Spare on strike. I was just about to say that piece of wood in behind the four. I was wondering if it was going to help, but he didn't need it. 72 plus a ball here. Both of our bowlers right out of the gate. And not the, not the Philly wanted. Which is four. That's only the second time he's missed the head pin so far in the first string. No shame in having a 76 half though. Yeah. I'll take that every day in the week. And outside Look at this. And Does it go? That 10 pin is reluctant, it won't go. Unbelievable. Nearly his fifth mark. Yes. Wow. In six boxes. Yes. Nice 10. How's those TV pins, though? 
have those nice square bottoms on them. They don't rock and fall just as much as the open play pins a little bit. Well, it depends where you are. Yeah, that's true. So, this is Brian Fuller Jr., and he is off the head pin. Sometimes you see the best of what Brian has when he's pushed to the limit. Absolutely. Well, it makes you dig down a little bit deeper and right, that, try a little bit harder. That focus and that concentration Absolutely. is heightened. Absolutely. Nice 10. Brian is still perfect. 87. As we've said before, Brian with the 224 high single. Great profile of Brian there as he looks at the triangle plus the seven. It's a makeable spare. I can't tell if that piece of wood's too far in front of the seven to help him though. Nice Not this bid. time. A little too full. Definitely a nice bid on that. Going for the sure thing. And a nine box. Brian so, at 96. So Kyle, as you're aware of, uh, and our viewers are also aware, in our previous ladder, we've had a movie character role for us, Chester Copperbot. Yes. Um, I'm sure if you look at a beautiful profile of Chris Winniars, you'll notice that he is Harry Potter. This is true, yes. <laughs> and uh, he has certainly shown us some of his magic tricks today. That's right. His wizardry effects. Four horsemen left. Plus the 10. Ooh, just a little thin. Just missed that. Slid past the head pin. How much is this worth? Depends on the week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, wow, nice, nice bid. bid. One of the great mysteries of mankind, why the home viewer jackpot never went above 800. Hmm. Have you ever seen that? No. Now that I think about it, you're you're correct. Oh, but you have you get postcards from people that oh six fifty really? <laughs> <laughs> These guys are averaging one thirty for crying out loud! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Big hit and the soft <laughs> four pin for Chris Winniars, our third seed. Sometimes it just makes you wonder how much they watched the show before they sent in the card. Right? You know, yeah. is this after two? I mean, <laughs> 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 yes. Nice spare for Chris. Five marks in our in the first string here. <laughs> Brian needs a mark to stay closer. Yeah, he's on that head pin, but the ball kind of flattened out a bit and didn't break the way that he may have wanted to get that four pin to go over. Oh, Three, absolutely. Four, six and ten. Ooh, almost. Takes care of the right side. Yeah. Nice 10. 106 after 9. The winner of this match will face Keith Bropre in our semi-final match next week. A big hit. Oh, beautiful ball. And the 6-pin, and I do not like that wood. I think he can see it, you know. Um, he's got a tight shot, though. Either that or he's going to have to go way up on the cap. He missed the cap. It. Slid it right across in front of the six. It's a tough shot either way. It is. Right. No question there. Nice 10. 10 box. 116 first string for Brian Fuller Jr. Not a lot of missed pins for Brian. He was perfect in everything but the eighth. Right. We got a nine pin, so back to that pinning conversation. And that's, that's why he's job. here. Oh yeah, that's absolutely. Why he's here. Absolutely. It's all that's it. Get your nines and tens, your strikes and spares will come. Ooh, there it is. There. The split is broken up. That late fall. Fills it with the seven. <clears throat> Four, seven, eight. 16 pin lead right now through the eighth. And and that's the sidewall. Potter gets the triangle to go. 
Can I get some fries with that? Yes. Okay, Why not? Good. Why? <laughs> Have it your way. That's right. Have right away. Way. Yes. <laughs> Chris got it his way, so. Back in the pocket. Hey. Right. <clears throat> Unbelievable exhibition here, Kyle. What a fantastic string for Chris. 142 is two bonus balls. And as well as Brian threw in that first string, he's going to be in a big hole. First bonus ball. Light hit. Carry seven. One more ball here. Three, nine, ten. Yes. What string. a throw. What a string. 152 for Chris Winniars right out of the gate in the first string of our second round matchup on Classic Channel Pins with a 36 pin lead over Brian Fuller Jr. We'll be back with the second string of our second round matchup right after this timeout. Chris Winniars is back up, or should I say Daniel Radcliffe? Yes. For the second string of our second round matchup, he just threw 152. No big deal. But yeah, only another day at the office. Right. 36 pin lead going into the second string. And what do you have? Seven marks? Um, one, two, three, four, seven. Wow. Seven, actually eight the because fill, he yeah. filled. He had eight in there. And uh, he had two open boxes, so he only left three pins standing on the deck. But uh, that's still a good day at work. Great bowling. Mm -hmm. Snapping it off the sidewall, no luck. Had to look at the 6-7 after being right in the pocket. It's on the single for the 10 bucks. And like I said in the open, only one pin separated our bowlers in the roll-off. Yep. Well, still two strings of bowling here for Brian. So still the time. Big hit and a single pin, the eight pin, and should have a clear shot at it. Yeah, you can see that. Yes. Oh, nice stick. There's a profile of our number four seed, Brian Fuller Jr. from Newburyport, Massachusetts. Comes in to the second string trailing by 36. Set up nice wood. 2 4 10. I don't know if that wood is going to have the angle to get the 10. I wish it would have tucked up a little bit more to the 2 pin for him. We'll see what he can do. Yeah, uh, yeah it's too far back. Yeah. It seemed like the, you know, when the ball hit the wood, it kind of deadened it too, yes. rather than going over to the 10, but yes. Brian has a 10 box here to match what Chris did. I was in Texas a few weeks ago teaching some people how to bowl candle pin in a little um, club that they had and trying to show them that not always the front pin, depending upon the wood, not the front pin is not always your object pin. It was a lot of fun. They, they'd never seen anything like that. And presumably these were 10-pin bowlers? They were 9-pin bowlers, actually. Oh. 9-pin, nine, nine uh, one of the few 9-pin places in the, in the world. Um, well, I shouldn't say in the world, but in the United States. And uh, a lot of fun. Very interesting. They don't have pin-setting machines, so setting up 10 candle pins on the lane was very easy for them. Hmm. 19 after 2 for Fuller Jr. Winniars is back up filling his spare in the second. He has 2 4 10. A little full on the head pin. He's made this before, I believe, me the other side before. At that time, he slid by the object. Chris was the 2008 ICBA Youth Champion in Portsmouth. That's an eight box. Appeared on the 
aforementioned Kennel Pit for Kids program back in 02 and what great work that uh, Steve Reno and Dan Gauthier, Robbie Taylor have done in that endeavor. Absolutely. It's a great program if you ever get a chance to go watch any of their roll-ups. All the kids that are there, and they're all serious about it, and a lot of them the future of this game, without question. 5-7-10, not a big deal, you know. It's, uh, the Lily. Yes. Great head been hit, too. Right. Part of this game that makes it so frustrating is that you can be, you put the ball right where you want, and that's what you have to look at yep. afterwards. It's Chris is 42 after four. So Brian has a couple opens to work with to claw back into this match. And, and that there it is. a big strike. That last piece of wood running that five pin down almost had a little competition from the nine pin falling behind it. But uh, still got the five down. That's all you need. Nice spot for a double right here if you're, you betcha. If you're Brian. Ooh. And uh, a punch out, but there are possibilities. There always are possibilities. Oh, I heard a great man once said that. Yes. Oh, we outside that time and leaves the four. A little thin on the uh, two pin. That's 10. Uh, 10 box, he picks up 14, the lead down to 30. Chipping away. Still got plenty of time on the score sheet. Psychologically, I think that's always something you have to keep in mind is that the deficits can be overcome. Mm -hmm. We saw that in the last ladder. Well, especially here, too. I mean, now Chris has sort of lost the head pin for a couple of minutes and uh, last couple of boxes. He hasn't been as sharp on it. Um, I take it back. I'm looking at my score sheet. He has been on the head pin, but he's, he's been open a couple of times now, and, and that gives you an opportunity to jump back in. Great shot, Ooh. and the seven pin won't go. Whatever he wanted to. Yeah, that's going to be frustrating. He did. Ten box. Under the lights in downtown Amesbury. That's what we do here on Classic Candle Pins, featuring some of the best bowlers around as Chris was light in the pocket that time and carries six as the two four five in the triangle plus the ten. There's no wood to help. But he's made some great shots so far. Oh, he's today, been fantastic so. so far. Almost be open for the fourth box in a row. It's just a little heavy on that one. Yep. Brian's got to take advantage. Nine box will put Chris at 61 after six. Brian's down 30 pins through the uh, fourth box, so if he can put up a couple of marks here, he can really do some damage. Get yeah, he's got a, a big opportunity here. Yeah. Right. Mm. Well, he's looking at four horsemen right plus the seven. Again, he's got that piece of wood behind the one pin. I wish it was tucked up a little closer. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And now I understand I think why. I think that piece of wood that was perpendicular to the pit behind the three may have... Uh, yeah. yeah. Kind of inhibited the natural uh, path of the, the pin. Wow. Yeah. I'm really glad you're here, because I can't use big words like that. <laughs> it's like sitting next to Albert Einstein. I'm glad Einstein. to be here. Yeah. Yes. Not only does he look good, but he sounds good. Yes. Says you. It sounds like a skin bracer commercial. <laughs> as. <laughs> Brian has six, seven, ten. <coughs> waiting for that wood to stop. Oh, I wish it had stopped where it was. I'm sure Brian did too. He's still got chances though. If he hits the, hits it between the six and the ten, he might snap it over with the piece of wood behind. And he snapped it over, but not far enough. Yeah. Ten.
10 box, and the lead remains at 30. We both swap nines and tens up there. So. Along with the illustrious Frank Face and Scott Moore, the Richard Daystrom of our program, I'm Kyle Bruce. Our entire team here. Hey, Another hey, strike. Back on the head pin. With the head pin, good things happen. Most second of mark of the second string. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. You're the guy in charge. I'm just the guy in visiting. I wouldn't say that. Our uh, executive producer is Mark Ritchie. Very yes! Double. Double strike. And a little bead of sweat breaks out on Brian Fuller Jr.'s forehead here. He's got to come back and match it somehow. Held on to it a little too long. One, three, four, six, seven, nine. Mm. Tried to go outside on it, it went through the hole. Fantastic out. And a nine box. But again, the first ball on the double could really make the difference. Absolutely, yes. Uh, not bad for the ocean. Yes. My thoughts exactly. But the 410. Ugh. A little bit of a Jacques Cousteau out there. Yes. yes. Oh, Ooh. that wood did not do anything. Yeah. Well, you know, in a shot like that, you, you might as well take a shot at the wood because cutting the four across the 10 is going to be a really tough shot. So a couple opens opposite Chris's double could really put Brian in a big hole. And we got a loose pin up there on the A6. How big is this bonus ball? Huge. <coughs> Not the ball he wanted to throw. Just two in that first ball. Ooh. And four in the second. So it could have been a lot worse. Yes. yes. And five and box. Five box. That hurts. If you're Brian, you're, you've dodged a bullet right now. And the lead grows to 49, but... Chris doing a little main, lane maintenance there on uh, six. This is a reminder to subscribe to the Classic Candlepins YouTube page so you can catch all of our content on there. We have some... Well, we have a very big hit. A single pin to pick up for Chris Winiars. This is the six. But this is a reminder that you can catch the Norcross files on there, and Nick is our number one seed of this ladder. Yes, indeed. And a very wonderful a young and coming up uh, star in the game. And you can see Chris wasn't really rattled by the fill on double strike. He nope. came right back with the spare. Yep. That's the way you have to keep fighting. Absolutely. And a nice fill on the spare, and I don't yes. think it gets any better than that. Strike on spare to conclude the second string. It's 122 at 274 after two, so. And you guys know what he's thinking now. You, you know he's wishing he could swap those two boxes. Oh, yes. Oh, Big hit for Brian Fuller Jr. It's the six pin. Now would be a good time to get hot for Brian. Take it into the third string. There it is.
bonus. Thank you goodness. very much. Thank you. The one and the three got uh, taken out? Um, I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, there's not much you can say. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Come on! There yes. it is. <clears throat> well, you made the most of it there. Absolutely. I mean, that... I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> Never seen that. About that, that fill. When you take out the one and three like that... When you, take well, out, when you take out the one and the three like that, usually it's time to pack up your bowling balls and go home. But yeah, I, know. Great. I have a suggestion for what you'd say. You'd say, do it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so a nice finish here. Cuts the lead down to 45. Chris Winniars is at 274 after two. It's Brian Fuller Jr.'s 229. We hope you're back for the conclusion for the third string. Second round matchup on Classic Candlepins, and we'll bring it to you right after this. Time out. Welcome back to Classic Candlepins. The third string of our second round matchup. Brian Fuller is 229 after two, down by 45. But as we've seen in the past, he's very capable of making a big comeback. The last ladder, Frank and I talked about the 10 stringer in the Pro Series Lakeside Lanes event where he threw two 180s, so he is capable of doing it. There's no doubt about that. Nice turn. And he starts his third string off with the 10 bars. Yeah, Brian definitely can just get hot real fast and do a lot of damage. I hope he does. Another split. Four, seven, and ten. Just waiting for that lumber to settle into the channel. Reluctantly. There it goes. I'm not so sure I'm liking that wood up on the front. It's going to have to be real careful with it. Maybe get something to come across. He was trying to slide it across over to the 10 and grab the 4 and the 7 with the ball. I think so. Mm -hmm. And almost. But a good 9. So 19 after 2. As we take a look at the Harry Potter lookalike, Chris Winniars, who has used his magical powers to create this big lead here. And he's right back on the head pin again. Another big hit and a nine pin drop. As he looks at the 10 pin. And he's on it. Yes, sir. single pin. He is just totally on fire right now. I hope you don't get tired of saying that, Kyle. Because he's not stopping. No. That's part of the game. When you, uh, Ooh. Oh. Never a doubt. <laughs> he had it all the way. Yes. <laughs> and the what? key part of the back-to-back -back spares is that they're opposite Brian's two opening. Yes. Yes, he's making that lead wider and wider right now. Brian hoping for some late action here. Five, six, seven. Going way low. Slide it across. Uh, too much wood on the deck. Slowed everything down. Ball. The solid seven pin. Yes. Nice. 
That's what you got to do. Keep hitting the head pin and keep coming back with spares. It's right on time. Yep. You just have to keep marking. Yes, especially at this stage in the game, you got to hope that uh, maybe Chris cools off a little bit. Right. Not that he's shown a lot of signs of that, though. Back on the head pin. Mm. Fills the spare with seven, but two six seven is the leave. I kind of like that wood in behind the two. It might help him out. I'd play left of the two. I would too, yes. between the two and the seven. Right there. Oh, oh. He didn't get left enough. Open in the third. Nine box, but the lead is 61 right now. Not insurmountable yet. There's still room on the sheet for Brian. And that's the great thing about when Brian went against Chester Copperpot is that in this game, sometimes you just you keep going and mm -hmm. you start building momentum, and the big lead will, can disappear. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't take very long for that to happen when it do, when it does happen. Right. Oh, what are you shock. kidding me? Wow. That's great. No wood to help. Cuts the three right into the seven. Just another day at the office, right? He has certainly dialed it in. Yes. Brian fills his spare with seven. Held on to that one a little bit too long, but he got a break. And he's a little heavy on number one. Yes, just missed the three. That shot's hard because you have to worry about the sleeper in the back. Well, normally if you go right in between the two pins, you get the sleeper in the back almost all the time anyway, but not every time. But, yeah, it is a tough shot. Sometimes when you hit the 1-3 pocket, you get the 1-3. Sometimes right. <laughs> that's all you get. As we've seen earlier. Yeah. A two-pinner for Brian, and he puts it down. All over that. He's going to need to mark out. Chris already has three marks in the third string. He's opposite a spare seven from Brian. And he matches it. But he's going to split. That doesn't mean anything to him. No. No. Just shoot it right over. It's no big deal. Two, four, ten. I like it. Uh, I was afraid of that. It looked good, though. It, it looked good, and it seemed like it came back on him just a little bit, came in too full on the two. A seven and a half. Again. Nothing wrong with that. Great shot of 400. Yep. We've only had one so far. Brandon Marks with yes. 401 in the first ladder. I believe it was against our number two seed for this ladder. Oh, it should be a piece of cake for him. Just play the outside of the three pin, throw it back over towards the seven. Yeah. Call it a day. Anybody can do it. Yeah, it's an easy game. <laughs> so Chris is open here in the sixth. It gives Brian a chance to climb back into it. Seven box. Needs a big fill right here. Big fill and another mark. Start the start the march back. Like you said, he's got to hope that Chris cools off. Yes. This looks pretty good. Wow. Wow, the lily again. 5, 7, 10. Not much you can say about that. That ball was oh, a crusher. That was. I think that's the leave I hated the most bowling. 5, 7, 10. And a 7 box. A 
frustrating things about this game, as I said before. This is a big hit, and he's got a single pin to pick up. Chris still has a 50 pin lead through six. Brian's got to hope for an open open here. Yeah. Light hit carries seven. Three, not, three, eight, ten, excuse me. Make a shot. But I lost that piece of wood in the back. Left of the three into the ten. Too full. Gives him another open. And score that a nine. That'll put Chris at 86. Still a 52 pin advantage. And Brian has a spare up in the eighth, so he'll want to match that. Two, four, six, no wood. Mm, Try to go down. outside that time and use the sidewall to get the six. That's the best way to try. I agree. You just don't have the angle to split the two and four. At least no, not without. Not, there yet. not easily, yeah. no. Another, another seven box. Well, giving Brian a little bit of an opening in the door here. Well, as we've seen before, a lot can happen. That's, That's absolutely true. correct. Brian's going to need two huge boxes here, though. Never say never. Nope. Never say never. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Brian has a two and two. And could not get anything to go to the left side, so he'll be open in the ninth. And not, uh, excuse me, an eight box will put him at 103. Uh, come up the hill. Nope. The two pin. Spare. So another single pin for Brian, but they will not be enough. He's at 342 plus whatever here. 350. Nice bowling. Very good bowling. Problem is the splits. Yeah, the splits really hurt him and. Um, Chris being as hot as he has been, it didn't give him too many opportunities to climb back in. Right. When your opponent opens with a 152, it's it's not easy to climb back. Yeah. Right. And it's also a little deflating, too. You, you start out of the gate and you're 36 pins down. Sure. And it doesn't make your life any easier going no. to second and third. So after a 70 half, Chris has cooled off a little bit. Has an eight box to put him at 101. But he'll be going against our number two seed, Keith Beaupre, next week, who won a match in our the very first ladder of our show. It's the first time he's missed the head pin all string. He's been all over it all yeah, day. He has been. Well, we've said it before in the previous show. If you hit the head pin more often, more often you're going to win. It's just in the nature of the game. The head pin didn't do anything at all for him that time. No. Flew around the 
three, five, and six. Eight box puts him at 109 and a great victory for Chris Winniars. 383 to 350 over Brian Fuller Jr. as Chris will move into the semifinal round of our the fifth ladder of our season. We'll be back to talk to our bowlers right after this timeout. Welcome back to Classic Candlepins, the conclusion of our second round matchup here. We have the best post-match interview in Candlepin Bowling and Brian Fuller Jr. who uh, threw 350 and you know, when you have 5, 7, 10 to look at after a big fill ball, that's got to be something that's depressing. Yeah, it was ugly and when Chris started out, he was 36 ahead. It's hard to come back from that. So, Right, and is that something that in the back of your mind where you, you just know that you got to, like when he's marking and you're open, open, is that something that kind of builds in you and kind of maybe takes away from your focus maybe a little bit? No, I was pretty focused. I just couldn't get anything to break up for me. And it's the way it goes sometimes. I mean, that is the game. We've talked about it. I mean, even and, and that's what I find interesting, Brian. Uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the playback, both you and Chris throw a pretty similar ball, and you were both on your spots, but for some reason it wasn't working for you. You didn't bowl poorly. You threw a 350 and you lost. Yeah. And Chris just bowled excellent today. He so. did. You got to hand it to him. He had a great day. Indeed. Thank you for bowling. It's good to see you again, and uh, God be with you. You too. All right. That's Brian Fuller Jr., everybody, and we present the winner of our second-round matchup, Chris Winniars. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. You just did not let up. 152, and uh, you I don't know what kind of spells that you cast to make this happen, but you're on to the semifinals, and that was a great exhibition of Candlepin Bowling. Thank you. You know, when you graduate Hogwarts, you know, you learn a lot of spells over the years. You know, I wish my wife were here to see you because she's uh, a very big fan of yours and she could probably get all the sub-references that you have uh, in your bag of tricks. Probably. I mean, if she wants, I can give her a signature. Wow. My goodness. I don't even know what to say to that. Frank, do you have any... Uh... Well, Chris, this was no ordinary match for Quidditch. I mean, when you, when you threw that double, you didn't have the fills that you might have wanted to. Um, Tell us about how you kind of stuck with it. How did you come back and you continued to throw marks after that? Uh, you know, you, you can't get down on yourself. You know, you can throw a bad ball. I mean, I, I threw two good ones before that. And, you know, you got to stay confident and, you know, got to keep pushing no matter what. And, you know, Brian bowled well. You know, he didn't get as many breaks as I did. And, you know, he's a great bowler and I know he can come back from anything. So, you know, I, I threw the two and I threw the four and I said, all right, you know, just try and pin out, hit your objects. And if you don't, you got next box and then the box after that. And that you did, so congratulations to you. Thank you. Congratulations, and uh, we'll see you next week in the semifinal matchup on Classic Candle Pins as Keith Bopre will be back to face Chris Winniars for our entire crew and the legendary Frank Face. I'm Kyle Bruce. See you next time on Classic Candle Pins. Okay, that does about, just about does it for the week two of our four-week ladder series as we see Chris Winniars uh, putting a spell on Brian Fuller Jr. defeating Brian uh, 383 to 350 and he just uh, had the magic going for him. I, I can't use that enough for obvious reasons as you just watch that match but he was all over Brian. The 152 first string and he threw the double in the second and considering how they hit the head pin uh, and he's five for five on singles. That's the difference, right? And you got to you, you got to consider when when that double comes around. But you know, Brian's thinking about that. Uh, of course, maybe he maybe Chris didn't have the fill that he wanted to, but uh, with the early pressure that he put on, it makes it kind of tough for Brian to to climb back out of that hole. Right. I mean, when you're uh, down forty plus going into that third string, it is candle pin bowling. Anything can happen, but. That's got to be in the back of your mind going into the third string, and you know that you need to put something together and hope the other guy doesn't mark. Absolutely, and that's that's really what it's all about. Yeah, you can have an opponent, but uh, really you are bowling against yourself, and it's a game of, of really sticking with it no matter what happens. You know that uh, you could throw a big, str big string, but the, the, the guy you're opposing could throw double that right. and come back from it. So, And the thing that kept uh, Fuller in the match was that it was, again, we see that pinning. Um, I think Chris Winniar has left uh, 28 pins standing. 28 pins, Kyle, to, right. to Fuller's 13. That's a big difference. That's, that's nearly double. Uh, actually, it's more than double. Um, but, again, that early pressure is what carried Chris through the, to, to his victory. And it's interesting, too, in this matchup is that we saw Chris with 15 splits 
and Brian with 14, and they, he still throws, you know, 382 or whatever, 383, excuse me. Right. Um, that's pretty amazing. I mean, that's doing a lot in your second ball. Yeah, and, uh, you know, then a, a, a time and again, I know I probably sound like a broken record, but pinning, uh, filling your marks, that's what the game's all about. Right, so... Very good. Chris Winiars uh, wins this particular matchup in the second round, and he goes on to feast Keith Beaupre next week in the latter semifinal. So for our entire crew and Frank Face, I'm Kyle Bruce, and we'll see you next week from downtown Amesbury for Classic Candlepins.